Coach Mark Dessart, or Dessart is in his third year at Weber and is directly responsible for all strength and conditioning operations for men's basketball and women's indoor and beach volleyball programs. Prior to Weber, Coach Dessart interned at the University of Iowa during the spring and summer of 2016. He also worked with multiple teams there. He graduated from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh with a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and a minor in Psychology. Coach Dessart is certified through the NSCA as a Certified Strength Conditioning Specialist and also is RSCC. Uh, without further ado, Coach Mark Dessart. Can you guys hear me good? It's called Good Mark Level. All right, awesome. Uh, so Coach Harris actually took my thunder. Um, like he said, this is my third time presenting at this clinic, and every time I get the after lunch presentation. So a lot of times we start to see you guys get that food coma, fall asleep. So I may call you out here and there, so be ready. Um, today we're going to get into some basic programming concepts by Dr. Vonderchuk. Um, a little bit different presentation for me personally. Uh, if some of the repeat offenders that have come year after year, usually more of like a monitoring kind of presentation guy, um, kind of went away from it this year to kind of show a different color of who I am as a coach. So getting into it. Quick thank you to Weber International University, um, our athletic director, athletic director, Dr. Uh, Darren Ritchie, excuse me, not doctor, Darren Ritchie, he wishes, uh, for allowing us to put this <laughs> clinic on. Um, sorry, that's a joke I make with him all the time. I didn't mean to slip out there. It's on camera now, so you can watch later. Um, and the NSCA for giving us the CEUs, that accreditation is awesome. Uh, for Tyler Ayers putting this on. Um, and then Coach Steve Rassel, even though he's not with us anymore, um, big, huge mentor in my life. Definitely wouldn't be where I am today without him, so um, huge thank you to him. University of Iowa Olympic Strength and Conditioning staff, uh, Coach Maxwell and his uh, staff really, really got my feet wet with strength and conditioning got me to where I'm at now, and University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, um, the strength and conditioning department there, the professors, very influential in my life. And then a big thank you to, my family's been very supportive, um, strength and conditioning coaches, um, you know, it's not always easy, having a good support system, a good support staff is huge. So, quick about me, you know, I just kind of gave you one. Um, not big on about me, it's not, not saying you guys don't care, but I always think it's good to kind of know where your speaker's coming from, understand a little bit about them before they present to you. So, born and raised in the great state of Wisconsin. Boy, Drew, we'll get to this. Also went to the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, so um, got that in common. Like I said, worked with a lot of sports teams there. Got the chance to intern at Iowa, huge blessing. Um, definitely got me to where I am at today. And then been here for three years, been very blessed, so get into it. Quick thank you, presentation-wise, okay, lots of thank yous. I like to give credit where credit is due. Um, a lot of this information is from these individuals, whether it's directly from them or something I've used within the slides. So these individuals for sure, and then many others um, have helped in this process and kind of get me to where this presentation is at today. So a lot of thank yous. Quick overview today of what we're gonna be going over. Periodization versus programming, how we're gonna need both. So periodization is not dead, you're gonna need both. You need X's and O's and that roadmap, that annual plan to get you where you want to go. Exercise classification, how uh, Dr. Bonnerstruck breaks it down, a um, little bit different from broad and few. Phases of training, same thing. So not your typical hypertrophy phase, our, our uh, strength phase, how we're going to look at it. A little bit broad in view of looking at some different types of phases and how he breaks it down. Periodization and programming layouts, give you a couple of those just to get your mind wrapped around what we're talking about. And then hopefully give you some key takeaways that you can take and implement from day one, um, something that you can utilize with your teams. So, what this is not, is not an in-depth examination of his transfer training. How many of you have read that book? Anybody? Okay. Couple, couple, okay. It's uh, very intense. I personally have not gone through every single page, word for word, um, but it's definitely a very good book if you want to look into it, so. So, before I get into it, role of the strength and conditioning coach, okay. I'm gonna refer back to this a lot throughout the presentation. Um, this is a little bit of a disclaimer. This is my opinion, so you can take it or leave it. That's okay. First and foremost, mitigate injury risk. Okay, putting our athletes in a place to make sure that they're on the field or on the court for as long as possible. 
Secondly, prepare the athlete for their sport. We want to make sure that we are getting them ready for what their sport demands of them. Thirdly, develop robust athletes because we want to maximize performance potential. Okay, we set these two up first and then we start looking at potential. Again, this is my opinion. And we help develop their character, work on some mentality plans, develop them as a human being, not just as an athlete. Okay. So, again, my opinion, what we do not or should not do, coach the sport, or maybe the sport teach for a specific skill, unless your coach is okay with that, or you have a background in that. So for me, I wrestled for about 14 years of my life. I've done some coaching before I got into strength and conditioning of wrestling. I would feel comfortable doing something like that if coach allowed me. But I would personally not do sport specific movements in the weight room with my volleyball team, unless our coach wants us to do that or I'm okay with doing that because that is their job. They got hired to teach the sport, teach that sport skill. I'm gonna do what I can in the weight room to better prepare them to maximize their performance potential. So, periodization versus programming. Periodization, concept used to organize the annual plan into fitness phases and timelines. So, this is where your mesocycles come into play. Basically, kind of like your roadmap of you're at point A, you want to get to point B, how are you going to do that? Whether that's a year long, whether that's, maybe you got to be there within three months, maybe that's your, your um, annual plan, quote unquote. How are you going to do it? How are you going to set it up to where you want to get? And programming, the tactics, are selected to develop uh, desired qualities during a given phase of training. So maybe we're going to work on some max strength during our specific preparatory phase, and we're going to cover what that is later. Um, but now, the more of the X's and O's and plugging and playing, how we're going to get there. So, a yearly training plan is a long term but flexible tool. Okay, flexible tool to help you organize your training. So, in my opinion, you're going to need both. You're going to need that periodization scheme and then your programming scheme as well. So, keep this in the back of your mind as we go throughout, and I'll try to tie it all back in later. So, we're going to get right into it. Exercise classification, according to Dr. Bondarchuk. Okay. At the very bottom is our base, and those are going to be made up of our general preparatory exercises. Okay, All this is on the handout. If you don't want to have to write these all down, give you a little handout, make your life easier. Maybe write down some notes next to them. This is going to provide the base of your training, and I'm going to get into the breakdown of every single one of these. Um, but then stepping up, the next step up to build upon that is going to be your specific preparatory exercises your SPE. So throughout this presentation, I apologize, there's going to be a lot of acronyms thrown out. So I'll do my best to always say what they are. Because I did this dry run with the staff, and they're like, I don't know what the SPP is, the SPE, the SDE, and I was just throwing out things and going full blown in my head. Okay? So I'll try to, try to slow it down for you a bit. Next step up is going to be your specific developmental exercises, all funneling up through. And then lastly, your competitive exercise which is, we'll get into very close to what the event is, if not the event itself. So, two key points on this slide. These three exercise selections are going to train the physiological systems found within the event. So we'll get into more of that. And then these two exercises specifically, these exercise selections, are going to replicate the movement pattern. So there's a big difference between these two exercise selections versus these two. So jumping into it. Okay. Again, I realize for those of you in the back, this is probably a little difficult to see. That's why I gave you the handout, make your life easy. But providing our base, our general preparatory exercises, these are going to be exercises or movements that do not mimic the sport movement whatsoever. Okay, these are not training specific muscle groups or specific patterns, motor pathways. These are just for general basic strength, um, general coordination, maybe recovery, teaching movement patterns. Um, Laying your foundation, basically. So then, the next step up is going to be your specific preparatory exercise, like we talked about on the last slide, your SPE. These exercises are actually going to begin to train the muscle groups that you're going to need or the athletes are going to be required to use. So maybe for volleyball, my athletes have to um, jump. Maybe I'm going to be starting to train certain movements, like maybe my squat. And I'm going to start to give away some of my next slides. But these exercises are going to be not specific to the movement. They're not replicating sport skill whatsoever yet, but they're starting to get the physiological systems and the um, muscles involved that are necessary. So taking a next step up, 
our specific developmental exercises, your SDE. Now, we are starting to replicate the sport movement to some degree. We are also including those physiological systems as muscle groups. So an example of this would be taking a triple jumper and maybe you're breaking down the event itself into some bounding drills or his approach, things of that nature. Or for a shot put thrower, maybe instead of doing the full throw or a discus throw, instead of doing the full spin and throw, you're doing variation of it, but it's still very um, sport specific. And then lastly, you're gonna have your competitive exercise. Now this is gonna be the event itself or variations of, so this is very, very specific. So for example, for the triple jumper, this would probably be them working on their triple jump. So to keep it simple, that's a lot of information. General preparatory exercises, no dynamic correspondence to the event, and just preparing the body for later on movements. So lay that foundation. And right, let this marinate a little bit. Next step up, like we've already listened, or I've uh, already shown in the past two slides, your SPE, low dynamic correspondence, and prepares the body for specific developmental exercises. So your next step up from pyramid. So as you can see, building the base all the way up. Your SDE, now we have a high dy dynamic correspondence to the event because we're actually replicating the skill to some degree. And then the event itself for variation. So keep it simple. Maybe if you want to scratch those other two slides, just look at this one. And then I laid this out uh, for time's sake. Probably won't go over it too much, but I gave it to you on the handout just to give you an idea of how you could break these things down. If you were looking at sprinting, for example, or grappling, you know, some wrestling sports, jiu jitsu, et cetera. So, what I'm actually going to get into now is going to have a little crowd involvement because I know this is my third year, okay, I'm trying to make improvements with my own presentations that after lunch people like to fall asleep, so I'm going to get some crowd in it, uh, some activity here going. So, what you have to do, your job. If you flip over that sheet on the back side, exercise one, you have an exercise bank, exercise listed. What I need you to do, but then I can do about two or three minutes and talk to your peers, talk to strength coaches, anybody walking around. You have to choose the two general preparatory exercises from the exercise bank and put them in those two blank spots. The two specific preparatory exercises, put them in, and then so on. So but keep in mind for a sport of volleyball, okay? So about, about two minutes here. I can't remember exactly the definitions. I know it's a lot to learn. It's like learning it the day of the class and then taking the exam right after. So putting you on the spot here. seconds here. We'll try and speed up the process, make you think a little bit on the feet. It's okay if it's okay if they're different, so you'll start to see why. So about 15 seconds countdown. going, feel free to keep writing, that's fine. Uh, keep talking about it, that's cool, no worries. For the general preparatory exercise, the, the two that I have listed for volleyball are gonna be my lunge and band pull apart. So again, not, not crazy specific, right? Band pull apart, just training some upper body posterior chain, some good shoulder scap work. Lunge, okay, good general preparatory <laughs> exercise that I like, not very specific to volleyball. Next step up, though, are specific preparatory exercise. Now getting some of the muscle groups involved of what I 
would require of volleyball is maybe our back squat, our hand clean. Okay, you can have different variations, and you'll start to see is how you kind of pair it, but how you keep yourself in check. My specific developmental exercises would have been the push shirt and sports squat. And the reason why is these are very specific, especially to our front row players, at least how our coach, um, and that's another thing, depending on how your coach teaches the sports skill itself is gonna depend on your exercise selection of how you're gonna teach that. So for us, our push jerk is very similar to how they're gonna block. And then the sports squat, we'll get into um, breaking it down of why, uh, but basically those specific joint angles and the intensities that we're looking for. And then approach jump or a depth drop plus a lateral step and jump. I know that's a long, but the approach jump is gonna be pretty similar to what they're gonna have to do in their sport for their swing. The only thing they're not doing is their swing. So it's pretty close. It's close as I could get to our competitive exercise. Um, when I was looking at this. And then the, the, this is just mimicking, um, to some degree, how they have to transition and block with the net. The so, if you can tell, majority of what we're gonna do in the weight room, or from my standpoint, is right here. I'll get more specific when I need to, um, but very rarely am I gonna try to mimic what is required on this board. And that's just my philosophy of let them do their job, teach the skill, um, and I'm gonna try to prepare them to be a better athlete in the weight room to help maximize that performance potential. So hopefully I didn't lose too many of you on that or hurt your feelings if you didn't have those up there. So it's a lot of subjectiveness. So moving on though, okay? Now we're gonna get into the phases of training. So we went from exercise selection and classification. Now we're gonna get into the phases of training. So taking a broad view, like I said, not looking at your hypertrophy, your strength, your power phases. Back now. So you're gonna have your general preparatory period, and okay? you're gonna start to see some similar acronyms, like I said. General preparatory period, your specific preparatory period, and your competition phase. So what I really want you to just get out of this slide, these three, is gonna be like an inverted pyramid. You're gonna get your general preparatory period is gonna be very general to specific to really specific, kind of like our exercise selection. You went from general preparatory exercises climbed on up, same thing here. General, specific, really specific. And then this is just, I wanna give you some layout of how you could potentially lay, lay this out and we'll get into that later. But general preparatory period um, should be before your specific preparatory period. And then you can break down your competition phase into pre-competitive period, main competitive period, or when you wanna quote unquote um, tape or beat, or taper and beat, so excuse me. So let's get into it. General preparatory period, or your general preparatory phase. Very interchangeable um, terminology there. But preparatory phase is used to elevate sport-specific fitness qualities necessary for competition. So just getting them ready for the sport. Very general training, nothing very specific here. The objective is to strengthen the overall body and prepare each athlete for more intense training that occurs later in the day. So again, like I talked about with your general preparatory exercises, this phase of training, you're gonna to want to lay the foundation, teach the movements, the coordination that you want for your later uh, phases. So generally, this is gonna include higher volumes, maybe three by 10, lower intensities, right? If we have higher volume, generally gonna have lower intensities. So if you don't use percentages, maybe you're an RPE guy. For me personally, I'll use lower RPEs, maybe like up to six, seven, five, depends on where you're going. Or do you want to really maximize, say those 10 reps? Maybe you're pushing RP of eight, nine, maybe that's like a full max out set. So it's kind of up to you, but generally lower intensities, less mechanical specificity, right? This is general training, not doing anything very specific. General preparatory exercise, probably gonna have a higher emphasis on those, right? Laying that foundation like I talked about. Not that you can't have your specific preparatory exercises or anything like that, but in general, you're gonna to want to have more GPP. And then, quick side note here. Low training age athletes, you're gonna want to have more time in GPP. Does anybody wanna guess why? Anybody? They can still get improvements. Yep, that, and they just need, if they haven't been in the weight room, they just need more time to get those lower pathways down, learn those movements, build general strength, and they can still get a lot of improvement out of it. So next one. Okay, moving along here, because gotta make sure I'm staying on time. Specific 
predatory phase, your SPP. So we have from GPP, we're going to build up to our SPP. Lots of acronyms. The physical abilities needed to perform well in the sport should be the main target of the SPP. So now we're looking at a little bit more specific. We have our foundation laid. What does our sport require them? What do we need to start training for? So this isn't necessarily where we're doing our most specific training, but we're leading up to our competition phase. So we better somewhat get there. At five, four weeks before my competition phase, I better still not be um, pretty close to where I was for my GPP training. I better close the gap somehow. So that's what the SPP is for. Exercises should be more specific. Okay. Notice I didn't say sport specific, more specific. And tailored towards the motor pathways and muscle actions of the sport. So really making sure now this is where, um, I'm gonna give away this, but this is where our specific preparatory exercises and specific developmental exercises start to come into play. Because now we're actually engaging the physiological systems that need to be worked. We are, um, using the muscle groups and joints and joint angles and tensies that need to be worked as well. So this is a specialized form of training that is done on a solid foundation of GPP. Okay, so if you don't lay that base, if you lay, you know, base this big, you can only build up from there. If you lay a base this big, now we can start to build up more and more. So I know that's a very generic analogy, but I think you guys get the point. Generally includes moderate volume, maybe four or five sets, five reps, moderate intensities, greater mechanical specificity, and like I already talked about, we're probably gonna have a higher emphasis on this. Now, like I talked about in the GPP, okay, general preparatory phase, we're not just throwing away all the other exercises. We're not just throwing away now our general preparatory exercises here. We're not throwing away some of the other things that we've been teaching, but should have a higher emphasis in this phase. So. Next one, moving on, here we go. Competition phase, this is what everybody always wants to look at, right? Is what are we doing in our competition phase? Nobody wants to look at all the hard work that's put into it beforehand. We just want to see the results, so get there. Competitive period entails a realization of sport specific fitness qualities necessary for competition. So basically, we just want them hitting on all cylinders, making sure that everything we're doing is very intentional, okay? very intentional. So this is gonna generally include relatively low volumes, so maybe three by three, four by two, um, we actually had a good conversation as a staff the other day on some of Bob Alejo's work of what he does in, se and in season and still working uh, towards maximal strength. Higher uh, training intensities. So maybe you're still hitting heavy singles at 90% maintaining or still progressing in season. Um, personally, not a big uh, maintenance phase guy in season. Still progressing somehow, some way, shape, or form. But what about that 30%? If we're working on, say, strength speed, speed strength, or derivatives of where we want to be, trying to shift that curve, you may have some lower intensities, but then we're getting into a higher degree of quote unquote sport specificity, of uh, maybe looking at joint angles, muscles involved, energy systems, and then pairing this with the intensities of maybe we're doing some type of BBT or velocities. So, there, in general, you're going to have lower volume, maybe higher intensity, but there is certain cases. If, you're looking towards later on in the competition phase, if you're trying to peak, maybe you want to use some type of BBT. So all in all, I tried to put this, uh, the past four slides on one slide. So again, try to make your life easy. If you just want to look at this slide and skip the rest, go for it. This is a, a quick little training lens that um, I'm not even going to take credit for. I was working on it, and then uh, Dr. Chris Bellin actually had a presentation when we were up in Indy for the coaches conference this year um, at the NSCA, and he had some super similar, and I was like, wow, that's great. I'm just gonna utilize most of that and try to put it into my presentation of how I wanna spin it. So um, thank, I have to thank him, that's not my idea. But this is just a, what I talked about. So the training lens, you look at the volume, what is your GPP gonna look like? Generally gonna have higher volume compared to your competitive period. Okay, they're already getting overloaded in the sport, maybe we keep that lower. Mechanical specificity, it's gonna go from less to greater to probably gonna be doing your greatest amount of sport specific skill in the in season. So let you look at that on the display. <clears throat> Transitioning phases. Now we've talked about how, uh, your GPP, your SPP, and your CP, your competitive phase. How do we transition? How do we go from one to the other? So when you're doing this, look for smooth transitions. They're optimal. So, what does it mean to be smooth transitions from phase to phase? 
Don't change uh, too much too soon. So that can come to exercise selection. So you're looking at classification of exercises. So your general preparatory exercises, your SPE, your SDE, all those ones on the sheet, right? Make sure that you're not, like I said, well we had, say in this training block on Monday, we did uh, six general preparatory exercises and we had two specific preparatory exercises. And that's what you did that day. If you go to transition to your phase now, say you're out of your GPP, you're going to your SPP, don't just throw in, well now we're doing six specific preparatory exercises and two general preparatory exercises. That's gonna overload that athlete. That's not a smooth transition whatsoever. They're gonna have a lot of probably residual fatigue or just be overloaded, like I said. It's very hard to throw in six, quote unquote, more specific exercises if they haven't even learned that foundation. So making sure that we're being careful with that. Volumes and intensities, I think we all know that. Making sure that we're not going from, say, 50% to 80% within the next week or two weeks or et cetera. Making sure that we're care careful about that. The complexity of the skill and the mechanical specificity all comes down to making sure that we have that foundation laid and we're not progressing that too soon, too quick. Um, so I know a lot of times we look at that in the weight room when we program things out, X's and O's, looks perfect on paper, then when we do in the weight room, we're like, holy crap, what did I just program? So this is just a way to keep yourself in check, make sure that we have smooth transitions from general preparatory phase, maybe you have two, it's GPP one, GPP two, and then you get into your specific preparatory phase. So just a way to kind of gut check yourself here. And don't just think of exercise and phase progression. Think about it as a whole. How is this going to affect the athlete? So some progression examples here. Walking lunge. Let's say three sets, eight reps each, uh, RP is six. I don't usually uh, prescribe intensities off a uh, walking lunge, so I'll use like an RPE system, which is just rate of perceived exertion, how hard it feels for them. So a single progression would be changing the volume, right? We add another set, four sets of eight, keep the intensity the same, or we keep the volume the same and change the intensity. So that's an example of a single progression. Double progression, we change the volume and the intensity. So maybe that's a little tougher on them. Uh, maybe this doesn't do as much for them. Maybe this is pretty tough, going an extra set and you're increasing the intensity. Or let's say a triple progression, why not? We change the whole exercise. Instead of a walking lunge, we change it, change it to a barbell lunge. We increase the volume and increase the intensity. So how much is too much too soon? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. But err on the side of caution, right? First thing I said, role of strength and conditioning coach. Mitigate injury risk, do no harm. So make sure that we're being careful how we're progressing things. And then at the end of the day, you have to know your athlete or athletes. Uh, you can't just, some athletes may be able to do this, okay? Some athletes have to do this. I don't know too many that of our athletes that can just have a triple progression in one week or two weeks. So just keep that in the back of your mind of when you're programming. A couple of periodization layout schemes. I'll um, just go over quick just to give you an idea. So this slide hopefully is not crazy hard to see back there. Um, try to increase the brightness on it. But say that you have your general preparatory period, part of your preparatory phase, maybe your emphasis so your emphasis now, maybe that's strength and endurance. Then you're moving into your specific preparatory period with an emphasis of maximum strength. Then you can break down your competitive phase. So we're gonna focus on pre-competitive uh, period and main competitive period. Our emphasis is gonna be strength and power. And then you're tapering and peaking, maybe it's peak RFD, power, what are you looking for? So it's just a quick example of how to break it down with an emphasis on it, probably nothing you guys haven't seen before. Here's an example of Bonner Chuck's block training system. Uh, during the general prepar uh, preparation period, or GPP, he's gonna have higher emphasis on these two, your GPE and your SPE, going back to the exercise classification that we talked about. And then his SPP, getting ready for the competition period, he's gonna focus a little bit more on those more sport specific movements to get them ready for what their uh, sport demands. This is an example of a little bit of stage training. So maybe you keep your general preparatory exercises in there for a while, and then you progress your specific preparatory exercises almost all the way through before you start getting this more specific. So this is closer to what I personally do. Um, no way is right or wrong by any means. And then, this would be a little example of some current program where you're keeping them in throughout the whole time. So off-season, more GPE. In-season phase, 
Okay, maybe you have your low emphasis on general preparatory exercises, moderate emphasis on your specific preparatory exercises, and a higher emphasis on your specific developmental exercises. So that's a little bit how I play into both of putting a priority on them. So I'll never personally take out general preparatory exercises out of my program. I still think that I still utilize a decent amount of those as like um, accessory exercises in my program, even in season. But I'm gonna put, like I said about being intentional, I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis on the main movements that I want them to get done. If I only have them for 30, 45 minutes in season for a lift, I wanna get the most bang for my buck. So details. Okay, another, another exercise for you guys. I'm making them work today. You're working harder than I am up here. So 12 weeks before first competition. So you can flip that sheet over. The bottom side, exercise two. Team, okay, keep in mind, has a low training age. Your team, again, is gonna be volleyball. So what I need you to do, set up your training phases in order. So I already put the competition phase 12 weeks out. Break it down into your GPP and your SPP, however you want. That can be, you can have two phases of GPP. You can have a GPP one, GPP two. You could have one GPP and however long of an SPP you want. If you really don't even want an SPP or just a GPP, leave it in there. I'm just gonna keep throwing out as many letters as I can at you guys until we get some laughs here, so laugh, please. Phase emphasis, the next step down, I want you to label, okay, so let's say for example, my GPP, where's my emphasis gonna be on that? Is it gonna be hypertrophy strength, is it gonna be power, speed, strength, strength, speed? Okay, kind of lay that out. And then choose your general exercise selection, priority. I don't want you to be like, all right, I need three general preparatory exercises here and two SPE here. I want you just to say, all right, my GPP phase, maybe I'm gonna have a high emphasis on GPE, and maybe a low emphasis on your specific preparatory exercises. So I'm gonna give a few more minutes for this one because this takes a little bit more time, a little bit more thought um, to break it down. So time starts now. So feel free to definitely talk things out. Maybe we'll get some music here going. Uh, maybe some of you need some Beethoven to think. <laughs> and one of the nice things, you'll as you're going through this, is talking to somebody else. They may have a completely different idea of how they would do it. So just keep in mind those top three things, though. 12 weeks, low training age, and team's volleyball. Couple more minutes here. A couple more minutes. Make your brain think fast. Hand right faster.
going? Steve, you done? Got it all laid out? Perfect plan? So moving on here, um, I'm not going to go over all that with you. I, uh, for time's sake, will not go over how I would lay things out, but definitely feel free to talk to me after if you want to. Um, but like I said, I was talking with Steve in the back there. It's, it's going to be different. Everybody programs different. Um, everybody has different ideas of how to lay things out. Um, but the big thing is, one thing, taking away from this, with the low training age, probably would have spent a little bit more time in a GPP. Maybe we probably wouldn't have thrown him in until just three or four weeks. Probably would have been a little bit longer, maybe six to eight. Um, but at the end of the day, though, too, if you're with a team or a sport coach that wants their athletes ready, you have to close that um, gap somehow. So they're going to need some, some time in SPP phase before their competition period, no matter what. So, so some key takeaways, hopefully, um, that you took away from the presentation today. If you didn't, I'll relay them out here. Periodization and programming go hand in hand. Can't have one without the other, other in my opinion. The program is like the X's and O's, how you're going to do things. Um, but the periodization is basically, like I said, your roadmap of how you're going to get there. So you've got to have two, lay them out well. It's going to be flexible. It's got to change. It's going to change all the time. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've laid out my annual plan, and started programming, and then not changed some, one or the other. Um, every, every team goes through different struggles in season, uh, preseason, um, whatever the case is. So remember, it's a flexible tool. Phases should build and progress, okay? Lead in to your SVP with good, solid foundation of GPP training and vice versa. Make sure that your SVP leads in well with your, uh, before your pre-competitive period or your competitive period. Exercise should progress and selection should ma match the training phase. So make sure if you're in an SVP phase, so your specific preparatory period or your phase, that you're not just doing in your competitive exercises, or you're not just doing strictly general preparatory exercises. Has food transitions from phase to phase like we talked about. Make sure that you bridge the gap well. And then at the end of the day, this is a big one for me, check that training line sheet uh, that you got for each phase to achieve your desired outcome. So that really, for me, helps me keep in, me in check with my programming of, all right, I say I'm in my SPP2 at this point, Okay, what do my exercise selection look like? What does my volume look like? What does the mechanical specificity look like? Okay, what does it all look like? Does it match what it should match? Am I just saying I'm in that phase, but then when I check myself, am I there? Do I have my team there? So a little gut check. Some final thoughts. So are you training what you intend to change? Like I said, there's a, there's a great uh, chance for you to gut check yourself on your own program. Um, so we do a lot of hot seats as a staff. So if you don't have that opportunity, I'd highly recommend that you give your program to somebody that you trust or you know somebody that's going to be critical um, in, a, in a positive way to positively construct you and help you help bring up your programming because you're going to see a lot of things um, from their viewpoints or standpoints that you may not have thought of yourself. So I really appreciate our hot seat. So if you don't do them, do them. How sports specific should we get? Okay, for me, I'm always going to stay in my lane. Okay? Always stay in your lane. Don't cross over. Don't start doing what the sport coach is good, supposed to be doing, teaching what they're supposed to be teaching, unless that sport coach is giving you the go ahead and you feel comfortable. Yeah. Again, remember, that's my opinion, so it's not verbatim. And the ultimate goal is to set your athletes up for su success. Wow. 
So make sure that you're doing that. Yeah. Gut check yourself again. At the end of the day, it's a gut check. Are you doing what you can to get them here? Okay, whether that's maximizing performance potential, whether that's developing character, mitigating injury risk, okay, make sure it's right here. So lastly, okay, if you want to contact me, you can. Um, otherwise, make sure, please do that survey. Um, really important for us just to, like Coach Harris said, I'm not going to harp on it too much, but for us to get an idea of how the speakers did, um, presentations, did you like them, what other topics should we have. So, um, thank you.